Bonjour et bienvenue sur la chaîne. Or should that be, hello and welcome back to the channel, and I'm afraid that is the extent of my French that I've learnt for this video, because I'm not very good at remembering it. But today we are here to talk about quite a lot of things French, and specifically French craft beer. When we think of craft beer, well, France isn't one of the countries that immediately comes to mind, if we're honest, but apparently it's undergoing quite a sizable revolution in, well, Viva la France. So what we're looking at today, well, we're looking at three different beer styles from the same brewery that are, well, as crafty as you can get, really. These are all from what we would consider a brew pub. They're from the town of Lacanau, which is kind of southwest France, directly onto the coast, west from Bordeaux, and, well, yeah, I mean, this stuff is made between the sea and the pine forest. This this sounds like it should be absolutely fantastic, but will it be? And the reason I ask will it be is simply because, well, I know a few people who've been to France recently and tried some of the craft beer, and let's say mixed results have been coming back, but from what I'm being told everywhere else, well, apparently the French really are getting their act together when it comes to craft beer. So today we're gonna to find out if that's true or at least certainly from this brewery. Now you all have to excuse my pronunciation, but this is from a, it's effectively a pub, a brew pub called uh, La Canulaise. Um, and here I've got three of their beers, um, starting from the kind of the weakest on this side over to the higher ABV. This is a Blanche, which is the French for wit beer or wheat beer. In the middle, we've got a straight up IPA, I think it's 6.1%. And then over here, this one I'm particularly interested in because this is a European blonde style. And that is a style that I really do have a soft spot for coming in, just tilting it over at 6.2%. Let's not mess around then. I'm going to try all of these beers right here, right now, rapid fire style, and let you know what I think of them. So we're going to start off with the Canulaise Beer Blonde Traditional, traditional wit beer or wheat beer. So 4.6%, it's a 330ml bottle. And if you take a look at that, that's some uh, pretty interesting artwork. It's all a bit dark and moody for a wheat beer. I always think a wheat beer is a bit of a summery, nice, fresh vibe, but it's what they've gone for and it does look pretty good. Right then, glass and beer owner at the ready. So then, in the glass, I mean, it looks like a wheat beer. It's got a nice frothy head on it. The head's a bit tame for the style. It's not a proper wheat beer glass, so maybe we'll excuse it a little bit. But other than that, you know, the body's nice, kind of cloudy lemon colour, properly yellow, and not seeing much sediment or anything in there. Got a nice bit of haze to it. I think it'll be all right. Hints of lemon, a little bit spicy, maybe some coriander seed. Citrus fruits all the way, but there is a hint of, I guess, a citrus addition. And I've experienced this in some other beers, and it's a, it's effectively concentrated orange, right? It's a natural product, it's literally just hyper-concentrated orange juice that people add to things for, well, flavoring. However, unfortunately, in recent times, um, as a brewer explained to me very recently, that companies that make dish soap and that sort of, you know, household cleaning items have started using exactly the same additive because it smells nice, and unfortunately, as a result, I am getting a hint of that kind of, as I say, citric detergent from it. It's mild, it's low key, there's not massive amounts of it. But as a result, it does smell more like a very clean beer. So let's hope it doesn't affect the taste too much. Cheers. Okay, I can gel with that. That kind of, as I say, overly clinical, clean aroma isn't really coming through on the taste in droves, at least. It's Fresh, light, zesty. This isn't a heavy wheat beer. This is super chill, sat on the beachfront, 35 degrees outside. Light bodied, quite light carbonation actually. Always expect a wheat beer to be a bit, yeah, a bit more lively, a bit fizzier. But with that, if you are just chilling, having a few, actually I think that lower carbonation level can really work sometimes. And for me, it is doing in this. Slightly thin body, but it's only a four percenter. And I have to say, a very nice expression of the style. I don't know whether I go as far as to say it's a fantastic wheat beer, but it's solid. From a brewery I've never heard of that is effectively a brew pub, one location, serving a very tiny, I guess, well, holiday destination. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed, to be honest. Right then, on to the IPA, and I'll be honest, this is the one that I'm really concerned about. 
the Whitbear, one thing I did forget to say is that it did have just a tiny hint of what I'd call the de facto French yeast style. French beers, and it's kind of Belgian inspired to some degree, but it does have its own distinctive twang. It's kind of Belgian meat mild farmhouse yeast, and I'll be honest, that generally doesn't work very well in a lot of modern styles, unless you're explicitly trying for, well, you know, a Belgian or farmhouse style beer. The wheat beer did have some remnants of it, but it was very mild and actually in that style it worked very well. I'm not sure how that will gel with an IPA, so let's find out. Before we crack this one open, let's have a quick look at it. I mean, nice, beautiful beach, sunset, surfboard vibes, bit of the forest as well to the side. I mean, it looks like they've basically taken a picture out of their window, I reckon, but yes, very nice. Much richer in colour this. And I have to say, just look at that for a minute. Can you see the colour on that? Deep, dark, rich, amber. It looks like a proper IPA. It looks, well, ironically, like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, which technically isn't an IPA, but kind of is. And it's got that big, it's got that richness to it. It's not just a pale ale in a frock with a higher ABV. It looks like the real deal. It looks like we've got some serious malt body and content in this, which I'm very excited for. The aroma, though is very different. It's not strong, it's subtle, it's relaxed, it's chill, it's light, sweet fruit notes. But the thing that I was reminded of, the moment I put that to my nose, wasn't any IPA at all. It was the inside of like a quality street chocolate tin. You know, that kind of slightly sweet, slightly, I don't know what it is, which is weird because it doesn't inherently really smell like chocolate, but. Yeah, odd. I don't know. It doesn't smell bad though, just not of a lot. So let's give it a go. Cheers. Oh, that's very different and not in a bad way. That's a very different approach to an IPA. It's undoubtedly heavy on the malt, heavy on the hop, but somehow all of those flavors are a little bit reserved. Again, a bit like the wheat beer, they're a bit chill, they're a bit sit back and relax, they're a bit less bitter, they're a little bit sweeter, they're just, I don't know, a little bit more accessible in a way. I think it's not without its perks, there is real beer bitterness in there. I think it's an unusual hot profile that's doing it. I'm getting more like light citrus and red berry notes rather than that big brash lemon grapefruit kind of, you know, mango papaya thing that we're used to in a modern IPA and this is doing the business for me. It's not maybe truly representative of what the style is, but again, what style of IPA were they going for? I don't really know. But going back to that thing I said about it smelling a bit like a chocolate box, somewhere deep down in there, there is a bit of what I suspect is chocolate malt because there's a super, super subtle, slightly dry, slightly bitter, dark chocolate note that runs right at the bottom of this beer. You could barely pick it out and I reckon change the temperature a bit either of the beer and in the room and you'd lose it completely. But right here, right now, that's not a note I've ever picked up in an IPA before, but I have to say, I really am digging it. It's very nice. If you're expecting, you know, a juice bomb, a shed load of hops, a big, massive, bitter smack in the face IPA, you're probably going to be disappointed. But, you know, a 6% to chill down on the beachfront with, again, these guys... They've nailed it. Right then, we're two for two on fantastic beers, or at least, well, very nice beers. And now we're onto the one that I'm really interested in. This is the Beer Blonde Traditionnel, 6.2%. And, well, let's have a look at the label again. Basically, very similar to the last one, it's all beachfront. There's uh, the back of a woman there, and there you go, just wrapped around onto the beach. Great looking bottle. Now then, out of the three, this is the only one that's had some yeast come out of the bottle and, well, there's a lot of it, if I'm honest. Um, not unusual in small batch craft beer these days, but surprising that the first two were completely clear in this one. Yeah, this might have been the end of a batch, but anyway, it's a traditional European blonde style. The aroma on this, probably unsurprisingly, is a lot more yeasty than the other two, mainly because of the amount of yeast that's actually in this glass. And 
that's all I'm really getting out of it. All three of these beers, the aromas are pretty much null and void. It's not, they're not very prominent on the nose at all. There is a bit of malt sweetness coming through. There's a little bit of citrusy hop and there's a slightly bready yeast note about it as well. But other than that, it smells pretty good if just not a lot. So let's give it a go, shall we? Cheers. Yeah, and that is exactly what I want from a European blonde. It's relatively low carbonation, lower carb anyway than a lager. It's got some lightness, it's got some body to it. It's got almost a perfect balance of breaded yeasty notes, slightly more depthy malt, and some nice spritzy lemony hop character as well. It's not the thickest beer, but having said that, the mouthfeel actually is pretty much spot on. And whilst this is not a style that's necessarily common within the UK and American craft scene, it is one that I'd like to see a lot more of because, well, it, it, it just does the business for me, to be honest. I feel like people are trying to create this style a lot at the minute with things like the India Pale Lager, and that just doesn't quite blend. If you want to see what a really good pale lager hybrid looks like, then, well, the European traditional blonde, really, is where you should be going. So, that is three for three. This is an obscure brewery, I get it. Most of you will never ever see these beers out in the wild. There's a very good chance I'll never see them again. But it was an interesting test to see where France is right here, right now, when it comes to craft brewing. I've got no real benchmark for this brewery either. Are they fantastic? Are they considered subpar? I don't really know. But what I can tell you is, if this is even an average, a bang straight in the middle average, French craft brewer, we should probably stop paying them some attention because they're playing around here with classic styles in a slightly different way. I'm sure it suits the environment it's from fantastically and right here, right now on a slightly miserable April's afternoon in England, I'm still thinking they're very, very good. And that really is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.